Eric, I know you wanted to talk about how to how to confront these people, how to successfully uh, live in this type of world, and what to do to, in a sense, try and defeat this Vatican-led New World Order. And I wanted to go over with, because we uh, tried that last time, we didn't get through it all, and I know you had a lot more to say about that. So go ahead. How much time we got, Greg? About another 40 minutes or so? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, Just as a recap a little bit, we have to remember the Dark Ages. The Dark Ages, before the Jesuits existed, was run by the papacy. The top orders were Franciscans, Dominicans, Benedictines, Augustinians, etc. And the papacy was running papal Europe, and uh, they had an inquisition that ran in throughout all the nations in Europe. That was their international intelligence community. It was the holy office of the inquisition. And when anybody was ever commit, uh, accused, secretly accused, they were the accused was not allowed, were not allowed to see their accuser. Whenever they were secretly accused of saying anything bad about the Pope or bad about one of the kings that the Pope was using to rule that country, they would be arrested at night. The inquisitor dressed in red would bang on the door, and then people would come to the door. Who is it? It's the Holy Office. And, st- and struck with fear and terror, the door would slam open. It would grab the person, the man of the house, arrest him, take him down, and torture a confession out of him. And now once he confessed to his crime, like the Russian KGB or NKVD, then they handed him over to the secular arm to be burned. After that, they confiscated all of his wealth and all of his landed property. So the Inquisition today, uh, to the Black Pope's international intelligence community, works the same way. Uh, and the IRS is a part of that. And this is what the Jesuits have sought to do, to restore the blessed despotism of the Dark Ages. And there's a book called The 13th Century, The Greatest of Centuries. And in it, these Jesuit uh, coadjutors call for the restoration of the 13th century when the Pope is the universal monarch of Europe. And that's exactly what they want to do now. And so what happened is uh, they, they had this power where you had the immorality of the Vatican, the mass murder going out throughout Europe for several hundred years, and all of a sudden, God raised up a man, a few men, Wycliffe, Martin Luther, William Tyndall, John Calvin, and a few others who believed the gospel. Jesus Christ had died for their sins according to the scriptures, was buried and rose again, and coming back, 1 Corinthians 15, and that they were the champions of justification by faith alone, not by any works of righteousness which we would do but by the simple grace of God that we're saved by grace through faith and not of ourselves. The gift of God, out of works that any man should boast. And when Luther realized justification by faith alone, through grace alone, and the scriptures are the final authority of faith and practice, he said, there's no more need for the Pope. There's no more need for the papacy. And ultimately he was expelled from the papacy because it rejected the word of God, and he became the great German uh, reformer out of which the rest of the reformations took place, like in Holland and in England. And uh, what happened with this Protestant Reformation when the Bible was put into the hands of the common man in his own language, he could now read what God's maxims and, and uh, his words for himself. And so in applying these maxims to everyday life, why these northern European nations broke the temple, the political power of the Pope over their nation after they had broken his spiritual power by believing on Christ, the one mediator between God and men, according to 1 Timothy 2.5. So with the breaking of his temple power, we now have what's called national sovereignty. There was no national sovereignty in the Dark Ages. If the king did not do what the Pope told him to do, the Pope would relieve his subjects of their allegiance to him. And the first one that could get near him and kill him would be doing God a service. So there was no national sovereignty in the Dark Ages, but now with the Pope's temple power broken, why national sovereignty begins in Germany, it goes into Holland after an 80-year civil war, it goes into England with Elizabeth and later Cromwell, and it also finds its way over here the creation of our Declaration of Independence and U.S. Constitution, uh, that all the colonies were historically white Anglo-Saxon, Presbyterian, and Baptist Calvinists, 97% of them. And so what we have is the modern era taking place after the 
Thirty Years' War ending in 1648. And so with the modern era taking place and national sovereignties arising and a middle class with its own money arising using gold and silver coins or currency redeemable and such, because all the nations had gold and silver coins, Europe and here, uh, what you had then was prosperity, you had a middle class, you had inventions, you had science, you had advancement of civilization like it had never advanced before, far beyond the Renaissance, all because... People embraced the Word of God, the Reformation Bible, for English-speaking people in the A.B. 1611, or if you please, the Geneva Bible, which comes from the same essential Greek text. And with that, the blessing of God was on those peoples, and that exalted their nations. And that's exactly what Proverbs says. Righteousness exalteth a nation. Well, how much more righteous can you be is when God looks at you and he sees his son, and when you obey his word and keep his commandments, then your nation, your community, your home becomes prosperous, and you begin to excel. Well, the Jesuits cannot have this. So what we must do is we must destroy the very foundation of this historic white Anglo-Saxon Western culture born out of the Reformation. So what we're going to do is we're going to wage war. We're going to cause wars between these Protestant nations like England and Germany. We'll get them to war and kill each other. And we'll... we'll uh, we will take the Bible out of their hands. We'll split counterfeits in the hands of these people. All come from uh, the Revision Committee of 1870, uh, the West Cotton Horde Greek text, which is really pro Jerome's Latin Vulgate Greek text. And we're going to make all these different translations of this corrupted Greek text, and we're going to flood England, and we're going to flood America with it. And we're going to call it the American Standard and the New American Standard and, and NIV, and goes on and on and on. And so with that, the people have ignorantly departed from the word of God because their pastors are hirelings. They're not real pastors. They're not real men of God because men of God will die for the sheep. They don't care as long as they're being obedient. And so now the Jesuits have replaced the Bible with a book called the Bible, which it's not. And then they get control. Once they break the spiritual power of the nation, like they broke our spiritual power here in America by 1900, they took over the government. And once they took over the government, the Pope's temple power was in place, and then they will execute canon law. So what did they do? They used America and the British Empire and the, and the German government to wage wars on populations that they wanted to see destroyed, as well as their own populations. And so where we are now is we are at the lowest ebb of the Reformation that I've ever seen in its history, and I've, we're at the greatest pinnacle of Jesuit power that we've ever seen. So what is the answer? The answer is we've got to do exactly what our forefathers did. That's the only way we'll break their spiritual power. No atheist is going to do it. No Muslim is going to do it. No Roman Catholic devoted to the Pope is going to do it. And no Jew is going to do it. It's going to take men who truly repent of their sins, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, that he died for our sins, according to the scriptures, was buried and rose again and coming back. And now you're placed in Christ, and now you have power as you're reading the Bible to resist Satan's government and his greatest second cause, which is the papacy.